By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are back in Zandam at the Zombie Cup 2. This is round number two of the tournament. And in this tournament, we've got Mono Black versus Mono Black. So this is super black, this whole game. And I'm just excited about it because there are two different black decks, right? We've got a Mono Black control deck with Royal Assassins, Will of the Wisps, and Demonic Hordes. And then we've got a more classical Mono Black, I guess you could say aggressive deck, aggro deck, you know, with Dark Rituals, with Hypnotic Spectres, with Juggernauts, but also with Frozen Shades and also with the Demonic Hordes in it. So, I mean, two really cool, beautiful black decks. If you love the color black and magic, this is the match you want to watch. Do not go away. Now, before I jump into the deck text of this uh, video, the deck text section, I would first like to point out that, as always, you can also choose to go directly to the matches, right? Skip the deck text section. The easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below because there you will find several timestamps. One of the timestamps reads MTG Games. So if you click on there, it'll take you straight to the games. And in that same description below, you will also find a link to the Timmy Talks Patreon page. And um, the Patreon page is very important to me because that's how you can support me as a content creator. So if you like the content that I make, please consider becoming a patron. Check out patreon.com slash Timmy Talks and you can already become a patron starting at just $1 a month. And the cool thing is... Uh, when you become a patron, you get access to the Timmy Talks Discord. You can join in on the Timmy Talks events, and your name will be mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every video. So you get you get you know you get a lot for a little. So please, if you have a moment, check out Patreon.com/slash Timmy Talks. Okay, now that that's all out of the way and you're fully informed, I'm going to continue with the deck text. I'm going to start with the Mono Black Control deck. Let's have a look. And here we see the Mono Black Control Deck by Yella, and I think it's just really, really cool. I mean, this is classic, right? I see four Willow the Wisps, and I remember when everybody used to play with the Willow. So Willow is an 0-1 creature, one black to cast, it flies, and for one black you can regenerate it. So it's basically, it can stop everything. And I remember that back in the day, people used to play this with Bad Moon and Unholy Strength, and you would just have this annoying willow basically around the entire match, dealing damage and blocking huge creatures. Whatever was needed, the wisp would do. Now, I think in modern old school, um, you know, the, the the wisp kind of got obsolete to cards like Maze of If and of course just to really good removal, right? People rather splash in a little bit of white for swords to plowshares than to play with the willow. Still, I really love seeing the willow and, you know, I think it still has potential in the, the current old school meta. So I'm just really happy to see people like Yella playing a full four off in their deck. And just in general, I think this is a really cool take on on black. You know, with black, you you often have the tendency to go aggressive. And yes, we do see here Dark Ritual into Hypnotic Specter. That's of course a really good opener all the time, you know, still in, in the current era of, of magic, uh, old school magic. Uh, but we also see classical cards like Royal Assassin, three Royal Assassins. We see the combo between Royal and Icy Manipulator, uh, right? Like Royal is a 1-1 one, one creature. You can tap it to destroy target tap creature. And with Icy Manipulator, you can, of course, tap a creature down. So if you have both of these cards, you have your combo, um, you know, on the battlefield, which is quite nice. Then we also see Demonic Hordes, which is a 5-5 five, five creature, and you can tap it to destroy target land. Now, the problem with this creature is that it's quite expensive to cast and you have to pay an upkeep cost of three black. If you cannot pay the upkeep cost, the horde taps itself and uh, you have to destroy a land of your own and your opponent can actually choose what land is getting destroyed. Now, the cool thing is with the current modern rules of magic that are applied in these games, what you can do is during your upkeep, when the demonic horde taps itself, in response to that, you can tap the hordes quickly so that you can also destroy a land on the side of your opponent. So yes... You're going to lose a land on your side, which is bad, and your Demonic Hordes is tapped, which is also bad, but at least you get value out of it and you can still destroy a land at the side of your opponent. So the card became a little bit better than what it was, you know, at least I think. Now, uh, besides these creatures, we also see a land destruction theme in the deck. We see Blights 
and we see sinkholes. So those are, of course, four great land or eight in total land destruction spells here in the deck of Yella. And that land destruction strategy works together really well with Paralyze. Paralyze being this enchant creature that you can put on target creature of your opponent. The creature becomes tapped and then your opponent has to be four during the upkeep to untap the creature. Now, of course, when you play with Blight and Sinkhole, your opponent probably will not have a lot of uh, mana to untap. So it's going to be really difficult to untap the creature after it's been paralyzed. And of course, Paralyzed and Icy Manipulator is another nice little combo that we see here uh, in this deck. Now, there's one other card that I have to discuss here. It's just a one-off in the deck of Yellow, but I love it. It's Xenic Poltergeist. So Xenic Poltergeist is two black and one to cast for this one one. It's actually a spirit now. Um, and you can tap it and until your next uh, upkeep, until your next upkeep, which is quite long, target non-creature artifact becomes an artifact creature with power and toughness, each equal to its mana value. So Xenic Poltergeist is also known as the Mox Killer. Like it's quite cool, right? You can use this on a Mox, it becomes a zero zero, it dies. And the nice thing about the Xenic Poltergeist is it's also a nice way to kind of try to t uh, deal with artifacts of your opponent, right? They get really vulnerable once they're turned into creatures. And remember, you're playing mono black, so you don't have Disenchant, you don't have Shatter, you don't have Crumble. It's really tough to deal with artifacts, right? That's why a lot of these decks usually play a Neverneural's Disc to kind of deal with enchantments and artifacts. At least with the Xenic Poltergeist, you have some kind of way to, uh, to deal with artifacts or at least interact with them. And I think it's pretty sweet that Yella is playing that one off in the deck. And uh, I'm curious, I'm curious to see how it will how it will perform. Anyway, this is the deck of Yella. Now let's take a look at the deck of his opponent. And here we see the deck of Michel. So I mean, do I need to say more? This is like aesthetics at its best, right? I mean, look at that, it's beautiful. Mono black, black bordered. Uh, so many classical cards. I mean, Michel did a great job here. I've called it mono black aggro, but you could even argue it's more like a mid-range mono black deck. It's it's really nice. We've got uh, four black knights main, four hippies main, three juggernauts main. It's all like power, power, power. We've got, of course, four dark rituals to play them out early. We've got two beautiful Sengi vampires. But what I love there is that bottom row. There's so many cool cards in there, that bottom row as well. We've got Pestilence, which I think is is one of the most underplayed black cards in old school. We've got Frozen Shade. I mean, I love it, man. Playing Frozen Shade. You want to play this card because of the art. It is absolutely stunning. And I mean, it deserves to be played in every black deck. And I know it's not very good, but look at it. I mean, and, and you know what? If you're lucky it, it, and you play it late game and you've got a lot of swamps, it can win you the game. It can. It can happen. Um, and then the cool thing here is Michel is also playing with Demonic Hordes. So Yele is playing with the Hordes, Michel is playing with the Hordes. I mean, how often does it happen that there is a match at a tournament where both players are playing Demonic Hordes? I mean, you hardly see the Hordes, and now we've got two in a match. So I'm like really looking forward to see the Demonic Hordes in action. But my, my favorite, I think, in this matchup is going to be that Frozen Shade. I mean, if I'm looking, by the way, at this deck and compared with Yellow's deck, then we do see two really completely different takes on Mono Black. I mean, this is really more the traditional take of Mono Black. This is all core set, by the way, right? There are no cards from the uh, Four Horsemen sets in here. It's all core set, so that's quite cool. It's all black bordered. And I mean, there are four Drain Lives in here. I think Michel could win it on the Drain Life. One of the problematics uh, or problematic cards in this deck that I see or the four terrors that play set because in this matchup they're going to be useless, right? So those are four cards that he will have to board out as quickly as he can, right? Try to get something more useful in. I don't see any uh, sideboard cards, by the way, here in the, on this picture, but I do believe he did play with a sideboard. So we'll just have to wait and see what, what he's going to board in after because I'm quite sure he's going to board out those terrors because they're simply, you know, dead cards in the deck. He's also playing with uh, two Paralyzes, so perhaps he's got some extra Paralyzes to board in there, and maybe some more Sangears as well that would be quite nice in this matchup. So yeah, I mean, um, this is going to be cool. I'm really looking forward to it. I'm hoping for, you know, for some Frozen Shade action. That would be really sweet, and also maybe a nice demonstration of how powerful Pestilence is, because like I said, I really think this is one of the most underestimated cards in in uh, in black i mean it's it's so good you know and i think we see underworld dreams getting more more action right there was a moment in old school where that card was only used 
in specific dedicated Underworld Dreams decks, and now we see the card more and more. I think same can be said with Pestilence. I think in a lot of decks, it would be really good as a one-off, just like the way that Michelle is using it here in this deck. But it's just, it's just my opinion. Let me know in the comments below, how do you feel about Pestilence? Am I onto something, or am I just talking complete nonsense? Which is absolutely possible. Anyway, we've looked at the deck here of Michelle. Uh, we've checked out the deck of Yella earlier. That means we're ready. Let's go to round number two of the Zombie Cup. Number two. Here we go. Game number one. Mono Black versus Mono Black. Yella here on the play. Starting with a Mishra's Factory. Passing the turn. There we see a Swamp. Into a Ritual. What are we going to see? Turn one Hippie. Into another Ritual. Turn one. Turn one Sengir. I love it. This is so cool. Now I am a little bit worried. Because remember Yella is playing with four paralyzed main so are we going to see a paralyze here that would be pretty devastating paralyze. yeah there's the paralyze oh that is tough that is tough but i, I do love that that turn one play just go for it there's also a, a juggernaut in hand there as well by the way so does he have another ritual no he doesn't that would have been cool to just go dark ritual juggernaut now but uh, it's not there and I, 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 again, I do love the fact that Michelle went all the way for it, right? Going like, whatever, double ritual into Sengir. There's a second Swamp here being played out, by the way, by, uh, by Yelly. He could now attack with the Factory. Chooses not to. There's a Royal Assassin. Oh, that is painful. That Royal is going to gobble up that Sengir. Ooh, unless Michelle can find an answer. Okay, playing a Paralyze. And actually, maybe it's not too bad that it's going to get killed because... He also has an animate that there in hand, so he could get the Sangir back later if he wants to. And now, of course, Yella cannot uh, untap the Royal. Ooh, that is tough. A Mind Twist. This could be the game changer here, this Mind Twist. It was already looking pretty good card-wise for Yella, but this, this Mind Twist really, really puts him ahead here. And he can start attacking uh, next turn. Or, of course, untapping the Royal and killing the Sangir. That's another option that he has. Ooh, here we see a Chaos Orb, so could flip now on the Royal, exactly, to save that Sengir. And then if Michel top, sec, top decks a land, he... Oh, that's a miss. Ah, oh, man, that is, that is unfortunate. That is unfortunate. If this would have been a hit, he really needed this to, to hit. That is, uh, that is a bomber here, also for, the, for this first game. Because now Yell is going to untap it, using the four lands for that, so he can now destroy the Sengir. There we see a strip mine. Wow, that strip mine is also quite good here in this situation. Only two lands left for Michelle. Is probably going to lose the Sengir as well. I mean, there's no rush here for uh, Yella. Exactly, just passing the turn. He can do it on end step. There's another swamp. And yep, that's it. I mean, these these are just too many setbacks here for Michelle. Does have to tap, of course, the Royal Assassin. So the Royal's now still tapped, unless he untaps it again. I guess I guess he's doing this verbally. Saying he's going to untap it. And he is going to attack for one. That surprises me a little bit. Although he's got the Soul Ring, of course. So it's easier for him not to untap. But yeah, it's looking really bad here for Michel. Passing the turn. And that's the thing with this, with, with these Mono Black Brews. It's it's hard to kind of get back from this, this situation. If you would, for example, Splash bla uh, splash White, then you would have always have this, this balance option. If you would have Blue, you could always... You know, get some card draw engine going or something. But, yeah, this is just really tough for Michelle's deck there. We've seen Hypnotic Spectre. He does have a Paralyze there. Could go for the Paralyze, but he's thinking about playing a Mana Drain. Exactly, Mana Drain for one. Because he knows if he Paralyzes the Hippie, Yella has enough mana to untap the Hypnotic Spectre and still attack with it. And he's probably going to lose. Well, then he's going to lose to Drain Love. So choosing to kill the Royal instead. And kind of accepting that he's going to lose the, uh, the Paralyze. Here. There's an animation here of the factory. So that's four damage. Going to drop to 16 and lose the one card in hand. That's the Paralyze. And I mean, this is just, again, really difficult. What if, uh, you know, Michel now draws into a card with the castle cost higher than three? That means it's going to be discarded the next turn by the Hypnotic Spectre, right? So, for example, if he if he finds a Juggernaut, he cannot play it out. If the Sengir cannot play out. Demonic Hordes cannot play out. So I guess he's kind of lucky then finding a Drain Life, although it doesn't do much. But it's understandable that he kind of like taps out and plays it out here. And there's the untap by Yella. So again, he can swing in for four. Probably going to set Michel back to 13. 
And remember, um, Yella is playing with demonic hordes, so it would be really cool if you could draw into a horde. So he has enough mana now to cast it. So that would be kind of epic. I believe it's six to cast the demonic hordes, and he can start destroying the lands on the side of Michel. So one card in hand. Looking at it a few times, probably cannot play it out. Has to pass here. I mean, this is so bad for Michel. Probably going to see a swing for four, and he's going to lose that card in hand as well. Oh, man, there's a Blight. Yes. That's it. Michel saying, you know what? You've got this. There's no way that I that I can overcome this. So game number one being won here by Yella, and now both players are going to dive into their sideboards, and we will catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two, here we go. So it's one game up for Yella. That means that Michel is on the play. Let's see what he can do. There's a Swamp, and I see a whiteboarded card in his deck. So maybe the whiteboarded cards come from the sideboard. Could be. We'll have to wait and see. Anyway, Black Knight here, turn two. 2-2 two, two first striker, protection from white. And there is a sinkhole here, taking care of one of the Swamps. So a lot of land destruction right in the deck of yellow. We've got four Blights, four sinkholes. Also four sinkholes, by the way, in the deck of Michel. We haven't seen that yet. We can kind of see the hand of Michel, right? We see Paralyze, I see Juggernaut there. There's another Swamp here by Yella, by the way. Are we gonna see a three drop? He is playing with Royal Assassin. Also Hypnotic Spectres are in the deck. We haven't seen a single Will of the Wisp, by the way, on the side of Yella. He is playing with a full playset. Haven't seen that card yet. He's a little bit in the tank here. So I guess he's got some options. Tapping three, there's an Hypnotic Spectre. I mean, that's sensible, I guess. You know, you take two more damage, but next turn you can potentially take a card. There's a Paralyze, though. There's the attack. So Yella dropping here to 16. There's the untap. Of course, doesn't have the four mana to untap the Hypnotic yet. Also see a Paralyze, by the way, in the hand of Yella there. Four lands now for him. Also, Michel again missed a land drop, so he's really light on, on lands here this match so far. There's a Paralyze. I mean, those Paralyzes work together so well, also with the Royal, but also with that Land Denial plan. It's really working here for Yella. And now we can do potentially a Drain Life for one on the Royal Assassin. Exactly, that's what I would do as well. Going up a life, going up to 21, I believe. Exactly. And here we see Yella. Is he gonna decide to untap the hippie or not? Has to make that decision before he draws a card. Decides not to. So perhaps he's got another hippie in hand. Oh, again, a mind twist. Oh man, this is unfortunate for Michel, right? Getting twisted in both games. I mean, that is not cool, you know? You don't want that to happen. Losing three really good cards here. Juggernaut and two Hypnotic Spectres. This is really tough. Okay, here we see a Royal, so. At least that's something. Still cannot untap the knight. And I mean, this this must be frustrating, right? Because you kind of feel that you've got a decent hand and then again you run into a mind twist. It happens, it's part of the game, but it's tough. And then there's the pass, I guess, to Yella. Now Yella has to decide, am I going to untap the Hypnotic Spectre, yes or no? If, if he doesn't, it's probably going to die to that royal. Unless, of course, Yella has, for example, a Paralyzed in hand, could play the Paralyze on the Royal Assassin. Yeah, he's gonna choose to untap the Hypnotic Spectre here. Could decide to attack that one card in hand by Michel. Then, of course, he is gonna lose the Hypnotic Spectre the next turn, but on the other hand, could be worth it. So Yella, understandably here, a little bit in the tank, trying to weigh his options. Deciding not to attack, passing the turn. There's a sinkhole. Gonna see the sinkhole on the swamp. One card in hand for Michel. I believe it's a juggernaut, if I'm not mistaken. So if he can just get one more land, he can start attacking. Putting some pressure on Yella. But Yella again has that card advantage after that mind twist. There's a drain life. Yeah, that is unfortunate. Now he's gonna lose that card as well. Exactly, attacking here with the Hippie. I mean, it's just not working out here for Michel in both of these games. I mean, it's looking really bad for him now. 
Hey, we've got the frozen shade. Yes, yes. I'm happy with that. At least, at least I think Michelle here is the moral winner casting the frozen shade. Such a beautiful card. Unfortunately, again here, Michelle is looking, staring down at that Will-O-The-Wisp, which is the perfect blocker for the frozen shade. But then again, I mean, it is what it is. I wanted to say the frozen shade is a good blocker for the hippie, but it isn't because frozen shade doesn't fly. Despite the fact that when you look at a beautiful arch, you think it flies, but it doesn't. Ooh, Dark Ritual into... Oh, man, there's an Icy Manipulator. And there's the pass. I'm kind of rooting here for Michel because I want to see a Game 3. I really like these decks. I want to see more of, of, of it, you know, more action. But I think it's going to end here after this game because it's looking so good here for Yella. There we see Yella tapping down a Swamp on end step. And now he's going to untap the Hypnotic Spectre. That makes sense because you want to take out that one card in hand. There's another Swamp. There's the attack flying over the Frozen Shade. Oh, man, that Navanorl's disc would have been so good. So the disc coming in from the sideboard would have been so good for Michel. It could have solved all his problems. Oh, man, tapping down the Shade. There's another sinkhole, but, I mean, that's just not going to do anything here. Of course, he has to play it out or else he's going to lose it to the Hypnotic Spectre. So, again, it's this situation for Michel that we saw in game one as well. He has to play out all the cards that he draws or else he's going to lose them to the Hypnotic Spectre. It's, it's really tough because even if he top decks, let's say, a Drain Life, he doesn't have enough mana to then kill the Hypnotic Spectre. So, I mean, I think if I would be Yella, I would just really maybe just keep untapping the Hypnotic here. Deciding not to. I guess his, his, his reasoning is that he wants to be able to tap down the Frozen Shade. And that is exactly... Uh, oh, that's not what... I want to say that's exactly what he does, but that's not what he does. <laughs> He's going for the Swamp instead. Oh, look at that. Using a Dark Ritual to untap his Hypnotic. Why not? You know, why not? Attacking here. Uh, losing the Hordes. We haven't seen a single Demonic Hordes, by the way, in this match. Well, I mean, we're seeing it now, but not on the battlefield. Michel dropping to 15. And there's a tap of the Swamp. There's another Swamp here for Michel and a pass turn. I mean, there is a little chance, right? At least he now has three untapped Swamps, so that's something. And yeah, I want to say for a moment there, I thought Yellow wasn't going to attack. But he is. So Michel on 13. So I mean, at least at least it's going really slow. There we see again the tap down of the swamp. There's the pass. Oh, there's a paralyze. Doesn't matter that much. Just annoying, but it's not a huge problem. Michel dropping here to 11, I believe, exactly. Tap down a Swamp again. He really needs that Nevenerl's Disc. If he can find a Disc... Remember, he's playing against Mono Black. Doesn't have to worry about any Artifact removal. I guess he hasn't found it, though. Gonna lose here to Sengir. Oh, man. That is so annoying. If you could just have one Swamp open. If it wasn't for that, for that Icy. Oh, man. Okay, there's another Swamp. So, at least... I mean, he's on 9... Of course, Yella does have that um, factory worker now as well, so he can he can hit him for four turns. So he's on, he's on a three turn clock, you know. But if he can find you know a Nevenerals disc from the top, that would be ideal. There's the attack attack for four. So he's gonna drop to five. I mean, go Nevenerals disc, go Nevenerals disc. Don't untap. I, at least I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it because you've got to play towards your outs, right? Then again, if you untap, you're going to buy yourself some time. Exactly. I think I wouldn't do it either. Okay, there's... Is this really going to help? Yeah, this actually doesn't work. Double Paralyze doesn't work, unfortunately. It's not like you now have to pay 8. You still only have to pay 4. 
So that is, yeah, that is unfortunate. I mean, I'm not sure what they're agreeing on, but the rule is you only have to pay four. It doesn't, it doesn't add up. But I guess they're they're sticking to the rule or not? Okay, yeah, yeah. We see Yellow reaching for his phone. where he will probably come to the same uh, conclusion. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna skip a little bit ahead in the video and then we're, uh, we'll see that uh, they've probably found out that you only have to pay for once and it doesn't add up. Yeah. And here we see, yeah, exactly. Here we see Michel changing the target, right? Both players now came to that conclusion. So changing it here to the Willow. But it's always kind of nice to be reminded of this. So I guess the Willow is now tapped down. And now we're just going to have to watch probably Yellow attack for another four, putting Michel on one. <laughs> and Michel, you know, yeah, is probably going to die. I mean, what can he top deck to survive? Maybe, could it be a drain life? Could a drain life kind of help him? Yeah, Black Knight's not going to do it. Yep, that's it. End of the road here for Michel. And uh, it's a 2-0 victory here for kind of the Black Control player. And uh, yeah, I mean, I think Mind Twist was really a, a big influencer here in these in these matches. Really set him back, and also the land destruction pack package of uh, of Yella did a great job here. So it is what it is. I'm always hoping for like these games to be super excited to get to show you like these two one thrillers of matches. But in this case, we saw a clean two zero victory for Yella. So. I mean, I think Yellow's doing quite well at this tournament so far. Two matches played, two one, so well done. And I believe one match, one and one loss here for Michel at the Zombie Cup number two. And that was round number two here from the Zombie Cup two in Zandam, the Netherlands. Join me again next week for round number three, where we have these two beautiful decks fighting it out against each other. We've got Blue Black Dreams taking on Blue Black Green Titanius Prison. So two completely different decks going face to face next week. So if you don't want to miss that and you're not a subscriber yet, make sure to hit that sub subscribe button and ring that bell because then you will not miss a thing. Whenever I update anything, you will get um, a message in your YouTube feed that there's a new video up. So if you don't wanna miss a thing, sub. And of course, before you go, there are three things that you can do to help the channel move forward that are completely free. That is liking this video, sharing this on your socials and leaving a comment. All these things are, like I said, free and really help the channel move forward. So please do one of those three things or all of those things and you have my eternal gratitude. Talking about gratitude, if you enjoy the content that I make, please consider becoming a sponsor. Check out the Timmy Talks Patreon page on patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. And if you decide to become a patron, your name will be mentioned in the end of the end scroll at the end of every single video. What end scroll? This end scroll. Ik het als vinkertje somber kan zien.